Revelation 17. We're going to try to cover this whole chapter. I, I don't think we have to get too far in depth. I, I think the teachings up to this point have brought us to get an understanding of what this chapter is saying. Now in chapter 16, we see details of the vials of wrath of God being poured out. So, it seems like in Revelation 17, uh, God just kind of takes a break in the narrative or a break in the uh, sequence of events. Amen? And He stops and pauses for a second and wants to show us what's going to happen to the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Amen? And boy, I'm glad this is in the Bible. Because man, you'd wonder... I mean, all the martyrs that were persecuted by this great whore that sits on the waters, I bet they think this is it. This is everyone who gets saved. They're going to have to die. And this thing will never die. But it's written in the Word of God what's going to happen to her. Amen. And what's going to happen to this great religion that we're about to talk about is the government itself, the devil itself will destroy it. So God doesn't even have to. Amen. By the way... When we read these events today, I want you to know that according to Jeremiah 51, that Babylon is a cup in God's hand. There's nothing happening today that God is not ultimately in charge of. Amen. So let's always remember that. Well, the devil's having a heyday only because God lets it go that far. Yes, that's right. Amen. But also with that, God's grace is way more than what any devil could release in wrath. Amen? So anyway, let's jump into Revelation 17. I want to read the chapter, and then we'll just break it down a little bit. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk, with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Actually, that word right there, admiration, is kind of like he was astonished by its beauty. It doesn't mean he admired to be like her. Amen. Amen. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Now, before I go any further, y'all remember back we talked about the beast that rose up out of the sea. This is the same beast. And we know that that beast is the one world government, the one world economy, and so on. Amen? I want you to know the only way that there's a world government is because it will be a world religion. Amen. Religion is always the catalyst for government. You say, well, what God did Pharaoh? Ra, the sun god. Everybody worship Ra, the sun god. Everybody worship the Chaldean gods of Nebuchadnezzar. That They did everything by the gods. You watch an old movie. Read an old book. Look at history. And, and one of the phrases they use all the time is, by the gods. Right? And of course, then during the time of Christ, we see that there was Caesar who made himself God. By the way, he wasn't the first one. Um, <clears throat> but religion has always been the fear factor, it's always been the motivator. Amen? Uh, even in America today, let's get America back to God. Somebody tell me when it was God. Somebody Amen. tell me that. That's right. When was America God's? Well, they were more moral. Some of the most moral people I've ever met are Amish people. And they're working their way to heaven. That's their religion. I've met a lot of moral people. 
right? I mean, television was more moral than it is now. Everything, just because it's moral doesn't mean it's godly. Amen? Let's get America back to God. Come on, man. You know what? We're starting to worship the God of statism. It has yes. nothing to do with Jesus Christ or any of that. And that too plays into this great harlot. Okay? But I say without apology that obviously as we read this further, this great mystery Babylon is Rome. It's Rome. Rome is called Babylon. Babylon is called Rome. It's not the city of Rome. It's the Vatican. It's the papal authority over Rome is what it is. Um, and why is it a great whore? Because it substitutes the bride. Right? What does a whore do? Well, you can have a bride or you can have a harlot. Both are women. But one is godly, one is ungodly. One is Christ, the other one is Antichrist. And, you know, after I preached Wednesday night, I didn't realize there was a Catholic sitting there, and he came up and said, What's your beef with Catholic? And I rolled out this big list. No, I didn't. And, uh, you know, when they take that Eucharist, which we will never call it here, we don't have a Eucharist here. But when they take their Eucharist, they're saying that that is actually the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. That's not Christian. Nope. That's anti-Christian. Right. So what would a harlot do to your family, man, if you were discovered with a harlot? What would that do to your family? Destroy it. Yep. That's the whole purpose of the harlot of Rome is to destroy God's family, God's bride. That's, right. That's why this book of martyrs is this thick. <coughs> Showing a record of the persecution of the great whore against God's bride. Amen. Anyways, she was drunk, and it says in verse 6, with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Uh, she is the primary source of getting the government to be against God's people. Amen. Um, we can see it in America today that America with a constitutional republic is against God's people. Anything goes if you're a queer. Yep. Anything goes as long as you fall into the liberal agenda. No, no problem. But boy, don't be a baby in the womb. Don't stand up and say, you know what, I'm not going to bake a cake for you. Sodomites, that's against God. Do that and see what see what the beast does to you. You know why the beast is doing that to you? Because the great whore is running the beast. That's why. People say, well, what about the Muslims? The Muslims only exist because the Catholics let them. Let's give you the truth. And there's so much talk now about them coming together in unity. Anyway, he saw this woman arrayed in scarlet and purple, gold and precious stones. If you ever look at the great gatherings of the, of the Catholics, especially uh, when they make their little trek to the Vatican and, and all this, and the Pope is there, you'll see a few things. One, you'll see a great sea of scarlet. You'll also see a great sea of purple. You'll also see all kinds of gold. You know, with all that gold, you know, he could have just plucked a little piece of the crown of, of the throne off and been able to help those people eternally where Mother Teresa had been ministering all those years in Calcutta. Why is she over here? They're all starving. And he sits on gold. Because it's it's not truth. It's anti-Christian. Amen? Our Bible says that if we uh, see our brother destitute and basically our heart doesn't yearn to help him, then what kind of faith do we have? But this is the Catholic Church. This is it in all of its glory. And my friends, it all came about because God's people apostatized. Yep. That's how it came about. It didn't just snap up. 
that ought to tell us this morning that the devil is very interested in our church. The devil is very interested in tearing down your family and our church. That's right. Very interested. And if you think I preach hard because I'm direct, I want you to know I'm trying to whip the devil who's trying to get a hold in your life. And you say, you can't whip the devil. The Word of God can. Amen. And boy, when you preach it with the Spirit, God will whip the devil. Amen. Amen. That's what we're here for. We're here to be encouraged in Christ and strengthened and to be pulled away from sin and not to be part of this religious crowd that gets admiration. We're part of the religious crowd that gets persecution. There's a difference. Hey, Bam. Anyway, what's interesting he says in verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Notice again, that's the same beast we've already seen. Out of chapter 13. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Boy, I've heard all kinds of stuff about that. It's going to be Judas resurrected and all this stuff. Fooey on that mess. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Remember when Revelation was written, it was past 90 A.D., the Roman Empire was already suffering greatly. It was already loosening its grip on the world. Uh, many empires were barking at its door and it was, it was about to just fail. <clears throat> he goes on in verse 10, he says, There are seven kings. Now he gets it very clear to us what he's talking about. There are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. So what do we got here? He, he said there's seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and that was the time of, of John's writing this, one is, and one is, the other is yet to come. So there was going to be another world kingdom world-dominating government after John's day, after the Roman Empire. And it will continue a short space. Okay? Let me read a little bit more and then I'll give you what I believe this is. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. So we see a total of eight, right? Alright. There have been... Uh, when he said seven kings, there have been seven um, empires that have ruled the world. Now, the English had a big empire, but they never ruled the world. They never ruled the world. Um, they had India and so on, but they never... The world did not report to, in, to England. Amen? But let's go through the list a little bit. The first one was Egypt. Pharaoh ruled the world. Number two, Assyria ruled the world. Number three, Babylon. Number four, and of course we really know the story after this, the, Med the Medo-Persian Empire during Daniel's time. Number five, Greece, Alexander the Great. They took over the world, folks. Amen. Amen. We're talking about armies on a world scale, not just two nations. Then who destroyed Greece? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? The Roman Empire. Exactly. Then, this is the one, they said five are fallen. So that's all the way up through Greece. One is, that's the Roman Empire. Then he says, and... Um, one, the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. So there's a seventh empire that ruled the world. 
There was a seventh empire that ruled the world. It was called the Holy Roman Empire. It wasn't Rome. It was out of the Vatican, but it was a European confederation that ruled the world. You say, well, it didn't rule the American Indians. It didn't. How fast did we take them over and brutalize them? Yeah. In the name of God. So just think about it. But what about in South America? You ever hear of somebody named Cortez? And the Incas and the Aztecs and what the Spaniards did to them? This Holy Roman Empire ruled the world. And it became days of such spiritual blackness that more people were martyred for the faith of Christ than at any other time in history. But it continued a short space. We saw the Reformation, which also during that time brought, was, brought what was called the Renaissance. The Reformation was a changing of religion from Catholic to Protestant, and, and that was on a worldwide scale. And also was the Renaissance, which went from uh, Victorian-type conservatism, uh, modesty, things like that, and the Renaissance turned into lasciviousness, nudity. Uh, what, look at Renaissance art. Well, you can't most of the time because it's ungodly. Right? You see what I'm saying? This has already happened. Well, then we go a little further. And, um, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. He is of the seventh. Goeth into perdition. So this beast that she's riding is not any one of these. It's this eighth one. It's this eighth one. This worldwide government. Folks, already these prophecies are fulfilled when we have a one world government. Hello, beast. But we're working toward that now. Have you not noticed? We're working toward it now. I'll tell you some more here in a second. Anyways, the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. Verse 12, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So now he started talking about the beast here. He's kind of left the woman. He's talking about the beast. And it is a world government. Now, I want to give you a couple interesting things. I've been to Europe a few times. You folks that have been to Europe, you've probably heard the word Europa. As a matter of fact, I went to... Uh, Europa Park a couple times in Rust, Rust Deutschland, or Rust, Germany. <laughs> hey man, how do you like to be from a place called Rust? But anyway, it doesn't mean that in German. But when you walk in to Europa Park, right there is this huge beast, which most of the time in the Bible refers to an ox or a cow. Most of the time. Beast is an ox or a cow. And there's this woman, half nude, laid up on it like she's totally enthralled with this thing. And her name is Europa. When you go to the EU, European Union, in uh, Belgium, right outside the building is a woman, a naked woman uh, statue, and it's one of those mod art kind of things, and she's riding on this fleeing beast. Do you think these are a coincidence? Then when you go to Strasbourg, France, again, you see a woman being carried away. She's nude, because this one's completely nude. That's her statue. And she's riding a beast outside the European Union office in Strasbourg. The European Union, their name is Europa. Okay? Now, so when you hear that phrase Europa, there's a lot of things that could be Europa, like one of the dark moons of Jupiter or whatever. But let me tell you where this tale came from. 
why this woman is riding a beast. They think they're clever, but they're actually not. When you're saved, you can see right through these things. But back in folklore, and it's Phoenician folklore, the Phoenicians were um, pagans. They have a belief that Zeus fell in love with whatever this woman's name is. I don't care. Because she was beautiful. Can you imagine God falling in love with a woman? That's their God. You know, the, those gods. Zeus is the God for them. And, um, of course, Zeus didn't want his wife to know about it. And this is the tr- Just look it up. Go to Wikipedia. Wherever. Go to ten other places. Same thing. And um, so what he does is he becomes this big bull. And he walks out by her and he's so gentle and he's so perfectly built and everything that she's just enamored with him. And he's so gentle and calm that she decides to get on him. And when she does, he takes off with her, takes her, rapes her, and out of her was born the king of Crete. That's the Phoenician goddess that when you see Europa and you see a woman on a beast, what's that have to do with France and Germany and Belgium? Because it's all one Europe. They're trying to have one Europe without borders where you don't have to have a passport to get through it. Okay? Right now they have the Euro. I've never seen a Euro. Of course, when I go to Latvia, I was told that they use Euros there. That's crazy. I was used to Deutschmarks, you know, in Germany. and But we're going to see a Euro. What does Latvia and Germany and France and Spain and Italy, they're all different cultures, they're all, but they're one Europe called Europa, the European Union. All right, so we can see the spirit of Antichrist working there. So with that, now... Let's talk about the United Nations just for a second. Just go online sometime and do a little study on the United Nations. It, it's headquartered, by the way, in New York City. And uh, right now, I think there's what, like uh, over 200 nations that are a part of it now. Uh, by the way, it started with six inner nations, and that's every one of them are Europa, okay? And you can't study too far into the United Nations before you cross a phrase that says Agenda 21. You can't go too far without Agenda 21. And the idea behind Agenda 21 is the sustainability of the human race in midst of a great... I'll just go ahead and say, tribulation. Come on, come on. This is laughable. It's so easy to see. Of course, this group is killing millions of babies per year to sustain. But when you look at Agenda 21 and you break it down, it is proposing a worldwide federation made up of 10... Subregions. Ten, not nine, not twelve. Ten. Guys, do I have to really elaborate this stuff? It's here, people. Just as God said it would be. It's here. Amen. And you can mark it down. In the military today, you're part of it. Whoever's listening to this, if you're military, You're part of the Antichrist beast system. Like it, lump it, jump it, croak, puke, die, hate the preacher, want to slit my throat, I don't care. You're part of it. If you are in the military. That's right. This whole thing of worshiping troops gags me. Amen. Every time I go someplace, hey, all you veterans, stand up. I don't stand up. Amen. I don't stand up. I don't want people to go, hey, thank you for your service. I did it because I needed a job and I thought I'd get college out of it. Come on now. I didn't go lay down and say, I'm going to go lay down my life in Vietnam. It's not, I don't know anybody like that. Have you ever met, brother, you've been in? Did you meet anybody like that? 
I'm here to lay down my life for my country. Yeah, they're probably idiots. But I've never made it one like that. Not one. Now, I mean, they would, and I probably would have at some point too. Because before I got saved, I want to tell you, I thought a Russian didn't deserve to live, and it was for one reason. He was a Russian. That's what I thought. I thought we were better than them, and I thought that we need to kill them. That's what I thought. We trained, kill a commie for your mommy. I mean, it, constant. I was a tool. I was a tool is what I was. Yes. Now, a lot of interesting things. I learned a lot of good things. I'm not going to knock that kind of thing. Been all over the world. But I was part of Agenda 21 because I raised my right hand. And it said to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. But that's hogwash. It's to defend the United Nations. Because we have surrendered our sovereignty to the United Nations. Do you know there's a world court? A world court. Yep. You know, the doctrine in America pretty much is the lower court is the authority or the lowest jurisdiction is the greatest authority. Um, like, for instance, I don't care what law the United States passes. If the sheriff enforces our laws here, that's what's right. Amen. They can do their own thing. It don't work that way in a one world government. In one world government, the higher authority, the bigger group is the authority over. Amen. And that's what's going on. And we have surrendered to the United Nations. Uh, and these people that think Donald Trump is the answer, I got news for you. You are brainwashed. Amen. Now, do I like the guy? Yeah, sometimes I, I, I like watching him, seeing him talk, because he's kind of a funny guy. And he's fascinating. But that doesn't change the fact that we are marching into the new world order via the United Nations, a ten horned government, not ten horned, T I N. Ten horn, T E N dash horned government. Amen. It's here. It's right in front of us. Amen. So we are seeing, and, and here's the thing. Whoa! This beast comes and man tramples everything. We saw in chapter 11 they destroy the witness of God. We saw in chapter 12 that the people of God all get persecuted. But then finally, here in chapter 17, God says, Come over here, come out in the wilderness. Get, get, away from, get away from everybody else. I want you to see this. Here's the great horror. Watch what I'm going to do to her. I like this chapter. Because I know that we may see the end of this. Amen? Now, by the way, if anybody's angry, with, I'm not angry with anybody that's in the military, anybody that's in the Catholic Church. I don't believe anybody should be put to death. I don't believe anybody should be um, shunned. I believe the Gospel should be preached to those people. Amen? And Amen. it should be done with kindness in our heart. These people are deceived. I thank God there's, there's former Catholics here in this assembly. And I thank God for the wooing of the Holy Ghost and the preaching of the Gospel. Because if we, if we come at them, if we fight fire with fire, we're ungodly just like they are. Amen? So please understand, when I preach these things and teach these things, I'm not against these people. Not as people. But I'm against their government and their God, the Pope. That's their God. All right? He ain't going to last long because we'll see what happens. Verse 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. Again, when you see that phrase, do you not see that, that everything is not going to be like the Protestants would have you imagine? Like everything's quiet and... Um, you get raptured out and then all this stuff happens. Jesus comes back. It's very quick. It all happens within a few seconds. It's not like that, is it? There is a campaign going on here. There's a rallying of troops here. The Lamb is in heaven with the 144,000 with Him and He is preparing to make war against the Antichrist beast. And the world is rooting on the Antichrist beast like it's the movie Independence Day or something. Amen? We have to have a one world federation to take on these aliens or whatever they want to call us. And we are aliens, by the way. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. Yeah. Anyway, verse 15, He saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. See, that's the support. You know, if people ever realize the power they have, but they don't. 
people are what we call sheeple. Yep. They do what they're told by their government. The greatest government propaganda catalyst is your television. It tells you to take drugs. It tells you to be against this. It tells you to be for that. It points you in the right direction. And then when you say, hey, could you think just for a second, like my sermon Wednesday night, they give you the fluoride stare. Yeah. You know, people don't understand that they are the platform for all this ungodliness. If they refused to put up with it, it wouldn't happen. That's right. Anyway, verse 16, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Get this. The government is going to hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. <laughs> What's, here, here's what the devil is trying to do, okay? The devil hates religion because true religion, he hates it. So he's given us false religion all this time. But he still hates religion. Anything that names Christ in any way, he hates it. Just like the Apostle Paul had the attitude, you know, some preach Christ in pretense, but he was still overjoyed because Christ was preached. Yeah. Well, the devil's the exact opposite. No matter how Christ is named, he can't stand the name. And at some point, once this government gets to its full one world power, that he's envisioning, what a stupid idiot, because it's still all in the hands of God. He's going to turn around and kill this. In other words, it's going to be complete secularism. Complete. No religious drivings or leanings whatsoever. Now let me ask you something. Are we not seeing that already? We're already seeing the tendency, aren't we? You can't say, you know... Uh, one nation under God, which I know it's not, but you can't say that anymore. Um, to use God's name, if you don't mean somebody like a like Buddha or something, man, you're in trouble. You're going to get sued. All these multitudes are enamored by this woman on the beast. But she's going to be destroyed. Because once everything becomes secular, there won't be any religious... Uh, conviction to stop anybody in any way. You know, right now, most Catholics are against abortion. They have some convictions about that. That conviction will be gone. It'll all be gone. There'll be no religious conviction. But the people of God will still be here. Amen. And we're going to see it all. Amen? Anyway, now watch this. Let me read that verse again. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, about time, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For, look what that word for means right there. Because. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. God said, Here's how I'm going to handle this great whore. I'm going to make her own beast that she loves so much, destroy her. That's exactly what happened in the Phoenician thing. Uh, that little folklore of Phoenicia being captured by Zeus. He raped her and destroyed her. Got from her what he wanted. Do you see the same picture going on right now? Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now I know this. Um, we found that Rome is a city of seven hills. We've already named Rome and all this. Even in America, where we despise Catholicism, we did. Do you know one reason that John F. Kennedy wasn't going to be elected? Because he was a Catholic. By the way, he wasn't duly elected. He, he stole it. And Richard Nixon still let him have it. He wasn't duly elected, by the way. Just so you know that. But I love him. He had great speeches. Yeah, he was also a whoremonger and 
treated his wife like garbage. And I know he's more conservative than what we see today, but still, he was not duly elected. And the main reason they wanted to keep him out, why? Is because he was a Catholic. Fifty years prior to that, he'd have never, he'd have never even been on, on the docket because he was a Catholic. But yet now we live in a day where the Pope can come to New York City, Philadelphia, wherever, and Baptist, and even Seventh-day Adventist, everybody will go and see the Pope. Try to kiss his hand. Try to see him. Try to touch him. Try to wave at him. You can't tell me it's not the city that rules the whole earth. Amen? It is. God's going to destroy it with the government. And of course, that government's not going to stop its persecution of us. That, you know, once, once, once a beast gets a bloodlust, that's it. It's over. You know, all day long, oh, look at this kitten playing with those ducks. Isn't that cute? Isn't that wonderful? And all of a sudden, there's a little nick and some blood, a scent, a scent of blood it fills the air. He'll lead every one of them ducks every day. He'll, he'll make a mess out of them. For the rest of his life, he'll look for a duck to kill it and eat it. Because he got a blood t- a taste of blood. And that's what's going on with this beast. Amen? But good news, folks. We've got the grace of God. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful right. that we still in America, here in Tennessee, we can preach the Word of God and we can uh, say these things without fear of retribution, but that's not going to last no. very long. Amen. But we'll still preach it, though. Amen. Amen. That's the only way people are going to get saved is you preach the Word. All right, we'll stop right there. God bless you.